I want to make sure that you can be heard. Can I, shall I put on my headphones? You can be heard now, but if you like to put your headphones on. Well, let's see if it feeds back. Yeah. Now that's kind of good. Now, can you hear yourself properly? Oh, yes, properly. Hello, Jono. Hello, Carly. <laughs> Do people ever know you as Jono on the air here? Uh, after my book was published. Be because be they read your book and they... Yeah, there's, they a, there's Jono. You to yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, so I get more e emails directed to Jono. Yes. But uh, uh, other than that, pretty much not. You know, you, obviously. It's a childhood name. Jono, you are, of course, referring to All in Good Time, your new book, which is sensational. I mean, I just loved it so much. And I'm, I was never sure whether I loved it, as you can never tell when you hear a song by somebody you love, whether you love it because you love them. When I read your book, I read it with such, you know, a, a double your pleasure, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I knew the characters involved, and and I could picture you all the way and the drive from Los Angeles to New York with your, with your father and and j just so many things. But the but the writing is is uh, is just exquisite. And, oh, thank you, Carly. And I suggest everybody go out and find a copy of this book at whatever local bookstore or wherever they sell them these days. Mm. Well, it's just, just been put out in paperback, so it's easier to find. I thank you for mentioning it. This is um, one of the best tracks on, on the new album, which is called Moonlight Serenade, which is a collection of standard songs, including... Alone Together, sung by Carly Simon. That song was written by my father. And, whoa! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know why that happened, but it must be my fault. I think most so. things are. I think so. <laughs> I, I feel that, you know, basically all, anything that's happened along the way is essentially my fault. <laughs> now, how many people feel that way? I bet just... Just most people. It's it's really split between the people who really think everything is the other person's fault mm -hmm. and then the people who think it's their own fault. And I think it may be hardwired. Mm -hmm. That's well said. But uh, the the inclusion of this song makes me very happy. It was my it was my father wrote it for my mother, as you know. And it was the family whistle when I was a, a, a you know. Five, oh, six, do seven. it, do it, do the whistle. When anyone came through the door, especially my father, I'm home is, is what it said. But did he do it through his teeth like that? No, he was able to actually whistle. So, no. so therefore, Kay could hear it. Uh, Kay, being my mother, could. I, I guess she could hear it. Sure. Now, I recall your whistle as being like that. <laughs> there it is. That's me, yeah. Yeah. It's yes, a, I, I don't know how to whistle the other way. It's amazing my... when people make beautiful... Like, Bing Crosby was just a fabulous whistler. You hear it on White Christmas. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Oh, it's just amazing. And uh, White Christmas, uh, for me, I, is, is one of the greatest records of all time. You get so much bang for the buck. I mean, there's Crosby, there's a chorus, then his, his, there's the greatest song, perhaps, of all time. And then there's the whistle. And he's whistling along in that way that I can, you know. I think we, we that have gaps between our front teeth can do that. I mean, that's how it starts. Even if you have bonding later on, you, you, you still have that talent. I wonder if David Letterman could... could... You, I don't think he can, otherwise he would have done it. On the on, on, on yes, I mean, and you would have made along the way, but you yeah. but you would never know. We the combination of the two of us might have missed that moment. Do you think we could get him on the phone? It's possible. <laughs> I mean, it would take three or four calls. I mean, I I know how I would get to a point where it would be conceivable that he would be in the house or apartment where I was calling. I mean, it would take th that amount of time. I but could get to Paul Schaefer first, and I could get to Will Lee. If I you got to Paul Schaefer, you'd get to Letterman. 
Yes, I, I think so. I, but I think I'd get the answer back from Paul Schaefer in six months from now. If, if you just said, I need to talk to Letterman in the next ten minutes, he wouldn't accommodate you? I don't think so. Right. I mean, Paul Schaefer would, would say, well, what is this about? Is this, you know, is this an extremely urgent event? You'd and tell I, him what it was. And I would say, I just need to know whether he whistles through that big gap that he has. Okay, enough of this. <laughs> you know who would know? Who? Your sister, Joanna. She would know has, how to get in touch with him? No, she would know because she's seen every David Letterman show that's ever been that's televised. Right. <laughs> she has. She's very devoted. As was my mother, Andrea. She watched every show, and she was not the type to stay up late, but she would do it because she got such a kick out of him. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, there you go. Joey just, Joey could answer that, and uh, uh, we'll ask her. I've asked you to bring in some music that has drifted through your life, uh, and with with uh, with importance to you, and to tell us why. I have the first recording that's uh, that you've brought in. I thought it was a good one to start with because it's it's a it, it's not jarring, and I do have a little anecdote about it. Would you like to convey that anecdote now or afterwards? Afterward. Then I'll just tell you that it's a song called Cruisin' and it's by Smokey Robinson. Smokey Robinson. I've always been in favor of Smokey Robinson since I heard a lyric of his that included the line, If good looks is a minute, you is a hour. <laughs> Tell me the anecdote. Well, I had this idea, it was about 1986 or 87, that I wanted Smokey Robinson to produce an album for me. I was just, I had just heard Cruisin', I had just heard this song, and I, as I often do, I get addicted to a song for a year, and I can hardly listen to anything else, and I just listened to Cruisin' for, for, for such a long time, and then I decided I really wanted to work with Smokey Robinson. It was a long shot, but I'd give him a call. And so I, you know, called him through all the regular channels, like the Paul Schaefer channels, mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and I left a message, you know, for him, for him to call me, and I probably called three or, three or four times. I wasn't pushy, but I did make a couple of calls. And, um, and I, got, I got Sally and Ben, my two children, also in love with the song, to you know, just want to listen to it all the time. And every time I picked them up at school and we would be driving home, we listened to Cruisin', and we'd all sing with it. And we had alternative harmonies, and we were all so excited about it. And one day we were coming back from the West Hisbury School, where the where the kids went to school, and we were listening to Cruisin', and we were listening and singing so loud with it that we decided to take three trips around the driveway, which is a long circular route around my house. And we say, let's just go around once more. And we ran around the driveway and around the driveway singing cruising at the top of our lungs. Mm. And when we went into the house, my, my husband, or I can't remember who it was, said, you just missed Smokey Robinson's call. <laughs> so while we were taking our darn time listening to Cruisin', he called. And fortunately, I was able to get to him again at, at some future point. He called again, and we went down to Atlantic City, and I met him, and we had a wonderful rapport, and we never made a record together. Why? It's just one of those things. You know, it was scheduling, or, or, you know, his manager didn't think it was right, or... He didn't think it was, it, it was essentially, you know, you have a lot of these opportunities in your life which, which present themselves and you think, oh, great, this is, this is going to be my next thing. And then they don't pan out for one reason or another. And they're so, they're just manifold. I mean, the reasons are just, um, you know, you can't really explain why most things work. I think one out of every ten things might work. Sinatra and Ella. Riddle wrote the whole album, Nelson Riddle, all of the arrangements, never made. Really? Sinatra and Lena, Goodness. never made. Sinatra sings the whole album in Italian, never made. A country album, never made. 
But, you know, people were, people, phone calls were placed just before faxes and, and uh, cell phones. Uh, phone calls were made, people flew across the country, arrangements were written, meetings were taken, no album. Money was spent. Oh, money was spent. You know, country album. Yeah. This, this is the best, this is the greatest idea. Can you imagine Sinatra doing a country album? Uh, you know, I was I I was aware that it was going on at the time. I mean, just this this little little shuffle, this frenzied shuffle towards it, and I was just so rooting against it. Was there an opportunity for a twang from Sinatra? Sure, and and there are a couple of his records. One record in particularly called "The Only Couple on the Floor," which is a country song with a country sound, which is perfectly beautiful. Then there's the song called "Cycles." Uh, there, there are two or three of his records that suggest a country feeling, and that's it. He sings them beautifully, but a whole album uh, of, of 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 country songs, I just didn't want it at the time. You know, I can hear certain of his songs in a in a country setting where he wouldn't have to change his delivery at all. But something like like one for my baby. I mean, I can hear a steel like like, like a pedal steel in there. Or a dobro, and and you know, just a kind of a country arrangement around his vocal, exactly the way it is. But to what end? Um, that it would bring it to a country audience. Mm -hmm. When when the first duets album was in preparation, uh, you you called me up and asked me to go over and hear uh, some of the things that Sinatra had put down because you had been offered. Uh, any number of possibilities, right? Including one for Inclu my baby. That's what put, yeah, put yeah, it, yeah. this in mind. One for my baby. And my own feeling immediately, which was yours, was to leave him alone on it. Let him sing One for My Baby alone. But you had another uh, alcohol oh, business. The reason was that I was the spokesperson for Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't very well <laughs> include the lyric, One for My Baby and One More for the Road. I mean... Mm -hmm. How funny would that have been? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a, there was there were other good political reasons not to do it. Well, one of the the, the result of it was uh, the combination of two songs. I guess I'll hang my tears out to dry, sung by Sinatra, and We Small Hours, sung by you, and woven in together. Woven in together on on that first CD, and it's for me, first of all, because it's you. It's so easily the best thing on it. Now, you you had the tape. You sang. Where did you sing your part? I sang my part in a studio in Boston with Phil Ramone kind of at, at the producer's table. And Frank had done all of his vocals in his house in either Palm Springs or, or wherever he lives in, lived in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And so when the the the... The voice fed, feed was fed to me in Boston, and I sang over it. It seemed to be, you know, I seemed to be able to sing over it perfectly. But then the playback, it was a quarter of a second off every time we played it back. And so there was, there, there was the cross-country delay, which mm -hmm. they probably don't have anymore, but, but then they did. So I had to learn the song, singing it on a quarter of a beat, ahead of myself every every phrase in, in in order to get in sync with him it was the oddest thing i've ever done well, how does how give us give us an example of that well you have to sing you uh, i guess i'll let my tears out to dry i mean or you know just I sing see, no what? you know what just that would be impossible sing sing in the wee small hours and i'll and i'll sing a quarter of a second ahead of you in the wee, wee small, small hours, hours. <laughs> no, but we'd have to have the same phrasing. But that's but that's the way I would always have to be uh, just slightly ahead of him, <laughs> and then that would make it jibe, jibe. Uh -huh. Both things are true. Applicable. Yeah, right. Brass well, it, it 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 worked out. It it really did. 